Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala Rasulih al Kareem. Amma bad. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone, I hope you're well. This is Harun, and welcome to a video where we'll be looking at the Quran. In this video, I want to look at Surah Al Mu'minun, uh, the chapter which looks at the believers. It's in the Quran, and I want to look at the first few verses of this Surah Al-Mu'minun, which is the 23rd Surah in the Quran. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, Qadaf uh, Lahal Mu'minun, successful are the believers, Alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon, those when they are in their prayers, um, they are humble. Um, so, in this opening few verses of the Quran, Allah, God will prevent, pre present seven uh, particular characteristics of those who we can consider to be successful. So it's worth mentioning right at the beginning as well that one of the ulama said, So the chapter before this is a chapter of Hajj. And many ulama uh, refer to the connection with this surah and the chapter before it. And one of them is this verse that we find in the previous chapter, verse number 88. Worship your Lord and engage in good so that you may be successful. So you see the word tuflihun coming here as a verb, and it appears in this surah, Surah Al Mu'minun, right at the beginning, aflaha, coming from the triliteral Arabic root falaha, which means successful, right? And so um, this is something to bear in mind. And then he continues, وَقَرَّرَ ذَلِكَ بِبَقَيَّةِ السُّورَةِ حَيْثُ أَمَرَ بِالْمُجَاهَدَةِ فِيهَا حَقَّ الْمُجَاهَدَةِ And the rest of the surah, Allah expects us and guides us to um, strive to please him. And then he praises these people as well. So it's something that you receive from the divine as well. And so Allah says, what is this fallah? So he gives the tafasil of it, the details of it as well. And so the surah is sifatul mu'minin. It describes the attributes of the believers. So if we want to, so to speak, hold up a mirror to ourselves, then maybe this is one of the chapters that we might want to hold up in front of us. And Allah also mentions, وَمُحَاجَّةِ kafirin. Uh, aside from the believers, Allah also shows us the arguments, rather weak and shallow, of the disbelievers. There's a third category that appears in this surah, besides the mu'mini, the believers, and the disbelievers, is that these people who are in a state of ghafla, ghafilin, um, people who are in a state of heedlessness. Right? And this is the surah as an introduction. So Allah begins, Allah brings in the first attribute of the believer. So before one performs righteous actions, one must, as a prerequisite, be a believer. So Allah begins with this, successful are the believers, right? And قَدْ فَازَ بِمَا رَجَ وَأَمَنَ مِمَّا خَافَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said that mu'minun, and the word falah, success here means that they've been successful with what they have hoped from Allah, and they've been saved from what they were fearful of as believers. So in this world, we will never get everything that we want. We will never reach complete success. And sometimes even in this world, something that appears to be successful is only successful in the way that we measure it in this world. Ultimate success is success in the Akhir. And this is really, really important because people sometimes have this view of presentism. So whoever is successful at this moment in time are the successful ones. That's not necessarily true. That's a fallacy. There might be people who are very, very successful uh, financially, militarily, politically, but that's a worldly success. That's a mundane success. What's really successful uh, is when a person enters paradise and pleases their Lord. And this is something that we will come back to towards the end of this video. So he says this right at the beginning. Then Allah says, hum fi That when they're in their prayers, they are humble. 
some ulama in, in, understand this word as mutazallilun, in a state of humility, khaifun. Um, they are fearful. Um, they are completely humble before their creator. Waqila sakinun. And the ulama also talk about this idea of there's a complete sense of stillness. Right? They're not moving around. They're not in a state of being you know, jittery, for example, but completely content with their state. Waqila al khushu fi So, what is this khushu? Khashi'un, as mentioned here in the Quran, what does khushu mean? Sukunul atraf, that your limbs are motionless, like you're completely dedicated to your king, your creator, Allah. Watarkul iltifat, that you're not looking elsewhere, you're not distracted thinking about other things. Wal ishtiqalu biha amma yashgulu anha. And you're completely focused in a way that nothing distracts you. But you're making sure that nothing will distract you from your creator. Abu Aliya says that it has reached me that Anna Allah Ta'ala Lamma Khalaq al Jannah, when Allah created paradise, um, He gave it permission to speak. And He says that the first thing it said was uh, this verse in the Quran fi So, this was some of the verses that were spoken, if you like by Jannah when God gave it the ability of speech and God can do whatever he wishes, right? He's not bound by any sort of um, regulations. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. In a hadith that's mentioned in Tirmidhi, for example, in the collection of Imam Nasa'i, in other places, Al-Haki mentions this one as well, that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, would receive revelation, sometimes you would hear the humming of bees. Sumi'a wajihi dawiyun ka nahl. You would hear the humming of bees. And then you would hear that it would reside and it would disappear. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, faced the Qibla. He lifted his hands and he supplicated to his creator. Allahumma zidna wa la O oh Allah, increase us and do not decrease us. Wa akrimna wa la uh, Bestow upon us um, ikram, honor. And do not humiliate us. Wa atina wa la tahrimna. Give to us and never behold from us. And prefer us, never make it such that we are preferred over. And please us and please be pleased with us. Please us and be pleased with us. And then he said that this was um, some verses were revealed to me at that moment. And I made this supplication in response to those verses that were revealed. And these were the verses that were revealed. Qad aflahal mu'minun until al khalidun that you'll find in the surah here as well. So this is something to bear in mind. The success is found number one through prayer by praying to Allah subhanahu wa taala, but in a way that you're humble before Him because He is your Creator, and there should be no scent, there should no, there should be no smell um, that of arrogance emerging from that person as well. And then He continues, al ladinahum fi salatim khashiyoon. Three things are mentioned here. Right? Uh, and then Let's come to that one later. Let's deal with the two now here. So Allah adds two more. That they avoid idle talk. Right? They don't waste their time. And they pay the zakat, the, ta- the charity or the tax, the alms tax. So what does Allah mean? Some ulama say, الحلف, They don't make false promises. Allah, they don't make false promises. They don't lie. They don't um, trick people. Other ulama also say, الشتم, uh, They don't insult people or they don't become a means of causing injury to people. So here the idea is fulfilling the rights of fellow human beings. Right? The prayer is huququllah. The previous verse was talking about the rights of God. In this, in this one, we are talking about the rights of fellow human beings. Can you see the rights of God and rights of human beings are connected? Some ulama say that this word, uh, means battle, like they stay away from falsehood. Muslims are not interested in anything that's false. Right? We don't waste our time with falsehood. And some people, ulama, also say that anything that has no goodness in it, we don't indulge in those acts. Mu'idhun. So they stay away from all these things 
and la yashghuluna anfusahum bih they don't engage in the, they don't they're not interested in other words you could turn it around and say there are people who are focused just focus on what they need to do which is to please their creator this is the way of the believer imam qushayri rahimahullahu ta'ala may allah be pleased with him says ma shaghala anillah fa huwa sahwun whatever uh, engages you or distracts you from allah is wasted it's it's false it's mis- it's error wa ma laysa lillah fa huwa hashwun and whatever is not for allah is a stuff it's irrelevant wa ma laysa bi masmu'in min allah aw bi maqbul ma allah fa huwa lag so he is giving us what love means that which is not heard by allah or which is not accepted by allah because allah will only accept what is good that is love that is what this verse is talking about wa ma fihi hazun lil alf fa huwa lahum right so this is all wasting your time as well so this is very very important that once a person is in, dedicated in prayer and they are in state of humility then in their worldly interactions they are not distracted they are not wasting their time then allah talks about zakah wal ladina hum liz zakati fa'ilun they do muadda they muaddu they um give the charity tax some scholars also say that this also means purifying the self as well and there's some debate amongst the ulama and those of you who are interested in arabic linguistics and so forth should know the difference between when allah uses the word zakat in certain places in the quran does he mean the charity or does he mean purification of oneself then a verse continues verse number 5 wal ladina hum li furujihim hafizun illa ala azwajihim aw ma malakat aymanuhum fa innahum ghayru malumin those who guard their chastity right except allah makes the exception here except when it comes to your wives and bonds women in your possession right for then you are free from blame so wal ladina hum li furujihim hafizun so this is something that's very very important especially in our sexualized society uh, where um, in islam you have a commitment to your wife you are contractually obliged to um, fulfill her needs and she is contractually obliged to fulfill your needs and to stay together and nothing else should happen outside of that right that's very very important in our sharia so this is hafizun illa ala azwajihim so this is very very important it's haram in our tradition for anyone to engage in relationships outside of marriage and losses that this is important for the sharia there's a lot of wisdom behind this um, which which maintains order because remember the sharia allah's law at at the foundational level is about maintaining order and the proof is around you right now today when you look around you because people are not respecting these parameters people aren't honoring their obligations they are having uh, multiple partners lots of other things are happening because of this then you only look at what's happening around us and we see the chaotic nature of the world around us okay then allah also warns us faman ibtagha wa ra'a zalika fa hulaika hum al'adun whoever seeks anything beyond this they are transgressors they are transgressors wal ladina hum li amanati wahdim ra'un and then allah says those people and again allah talking about human rights here can you see it's very very important rights of hate fellow human beings so allah says wal ladina hum li amanati wahdim ra'un those believers who are true to their trusts and covenants imam ibn kasir uh, reads this is amanati him which means that um all rights of allah and the rights of his servants as well right so fulfilling any obligations if you have something that someone has given to you as a trust there could be a physical item could be something they've given it to you no matter how expensive or inexpensive it is that is a trust if someone tells you something if someone tells you something in confidence that's a trust should be shared with other people al majalis bil amana when someone tells you something when you have a conversation with someone it should remain confidential in our modern age people just share stuff right but in islamic tradition we we maintain the dignity and honor of fellow human beings and don't share things that they have shared with us confided in us with in the same way if they've given something to us we should look after it as well and so they are very very these are very very important rights of fellow human beings and at the same time when you have covenants when you have agreements with people that you will pay x amount on a certain day or you will do an x a uh, certain transaction or a certain action then one needs to ensure that they fulfill that action as well ra'un at the end of this verse number 8 here 
means hafizuna jami'a zalik. They look after all of those things, right? They do hifz, right? They honor them. This is the way of a believer. Uh, and then Allah continues, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ And they are properly observant of their prayers. They're not neglectful of their prayers. They don't pray last minute. Um, they don't rush it, but they are observant. They know when it's time to pray, especially in the UK when it's winter time right now and prayers are very close. A successful believer ensures that they observe their prayers. And if you're working at a place, one should speak to the employers and explain to them why it's important to pray. And most employers, in my experience, are very, very understanding when it comes to offering uh, spaces for Muslims to pray. So there's, there's no real excuse for us to miss our prayer. You have his own. Here means, So they are consistent. They pray consistently when it's time to pray with all its conditions, right? And they are observant of all of its requirements, right? It's right. And they really try their best to perform that ibadah in a way that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah promises what at the end in verse number 10, that these people will inherit. What will they inherit? Some translations say awarded, but the word inherit is more appropriate because we're talking about warisun, inheritance, right? That they will inherit paradise, firdaus. Um, firdaus has different meanings. According to, for example, the Abyssinians, the Habashis, um, they say that it's Jannah. But so it's this idea of this lofty palace, lofty garden in Jannah. And they will be there for eternity, forever. You will never die there, neither will you be asked to leave. Right? So successful people will inherit. And when you inherit something, it means it gets passed on to you. So when you have these qualities that we've just mentioned, then you inherit the highest levels of paradise. And this is something that we have to strive for. I'll end with something very, very fascinating here by Imam Nasafi, uh, who mentions, Allah ta'ala wa'ad al-fallah bil-iman wa ta'ad fi awwal surah At the beginning of this chapter, Allah has promised success for those who have faith and those who obey him. And then he also negates success for disbelievers towards the end of the surah. So if you look in the Quran towards the end of surah, you'll find innahu la yiflihul qafirun that the disbelievers will not be successful. And remember, when we're talking about success, we're talking about ultimate success. So they may have success in this world, but Allah says innahu la yiflihul kafirun that disbelievers will not have success. وَلَوْلَاهُ لَوَقَى عِنْدَ الْعُصَادِ أَنَّ الْفَلَاهِ إِذَا كَانَ بِالْإِيمَانِ مَعَ الْتَعَادِ وَفَاتَ الْتَعَادِ مَا تَلْفَاتَ الْفَلَاهِ so Allah is also saying a very, very subtle point here as well, that if Allah didn't say this, then it might be that a person who disobeys God um, because they haven't been able to have faith or they haven't been able to do as much um, successful actions, pious actions, they might not get success. So Allah puts them at ease. So Allah saying, look, this is what I want you to reach. But even if you're not able to, despite the fact you're a believer, do not think that you might go to hell or you might burn in hell Allah put them at ease that failure is to do with kufr and not to do with disobedience so if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of your moral weakness because of whatever weakness it is it doesn't make you a kafir it doesn't make you a disbeliever it just means you haven't got complete success but success here does success here means you got the highest place in Jannah that's number one if you haven't been able to do all the things that you're able to do, but you're a believer, you've tried, it doesn't make you a disbeliever. It doesn't make you a non-Muslim. right? It doesn't mean that just because you haven't got falah completely that you're not going to go to paradise. Of course you're going to go to paradise. But if you want to get Jannah al-Firdaus, then you have to uh, complete these obligations that we've mentioned in the Quran here, in the first uh, 11 verses or in the first 10 or 11 verses of the Quran. I hope you find that useful. Uh, if you've got any questions, please do get back to me. This is from the Quran. And inshallah, we'll try and do more videos like this. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.